Hello all and welcome to tonight's review, which I am calling the amazing review because um, amazingly I've caught up on uploading all my backlogged reviews. <clears throat> and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit congested right now. Um, <clears throat> and that's an amazing thing because uh, I've been backlogged in reviews for over a year. And if I seem a little bit uh, sloppy already, that's because I had uh, frozen corned beef. I wasn't able to get corned beef on our St. Patrick's Day. I had, you know, some corned beef and I washed it down with uh, some more of that aquavit from the last review. And my god, it just goes so well with anything kind of fatty, you know what I mean? Anything kind of fatty, rich, with those sort of old world spices in it. But that's what, not what I'm going to be reviewing tonight. And don't worry, I'm, I'm not going to be really overly balanced. Because what am I reviewing? I am reviewing Kidin Ichiban. 100% malt. So they say, anyway. Um, <clears throat> which means, by Japanese standards, they didn't use any rice adjuncts in making this. This is one of Japan's... <clears throat> Let's see here. I'm not sure if it's Big Three or Big Four. There's Kirin, there's Ebisu, and there's Asahi. So I guess it's the Big Three. Maybe it's Big Four. I can't remember correctly. So let's read the label, shall we? Kirin Ichiban is one of the world's most unique premium beers. Ahem. Kirin the Ichiban Shibori process uses only the most flavorful portion of the finest ingredients. This is basically, well, I wouldn't say it's Japan's Budweiser, that sort of belongs to Asahi Super Dry, but this is Japan's Coors Banquet, maybe. Uh, when I lived in Japan, and before I really drank premium beers, Kirin would be the brand I would go to beside... Well, I'd sw switch in between Kirin and Isu Ebisu. My favorite of the Japanese macro lagers was Kirin Classic, which is no longer made. Um, why did I like it? It just had a little bit more of a oomph to the flavor than the rest of the beers did. Now, Kidin Ichiban 5.0. All malts, but generally a pale lager. Well, let's get to it before it gets too warm, shall we? All in all, I've had this many times. I'm just kind of doing this because, uh, I borrowed one from a cousin's six-pack when I went to a party. She had it out for, like, you know, just general use for the party, but I thought, eh, why not go and pull one and review it? But she doesn't see my reviews, so she'll never know about this. <laughs> so I pulled this one to go and review. darker yellow than the average Japanese pale lager. I know I did a review of Asahi Super Dry. This is a little bit darker than that. Again, big carbonation. All Japanese beers have big carbonation. They kind of like that big head effect when they pour it out too. Not much smell to it. Just some grains. No real corny smell though at least. And just the slightest wisp of hops, bittering hops. Almost no flavor, but a bit more mouthfeel than you expect from a macro lager. It's got a pretty I'm not going to say chewiness because it's nowhere near that, but it feels like you're drinking beer instead of soda water. Let's put it that way. Not really any taste. Big carbonation bite.
some grainy sweetness in the mid palate to finish. Almost no bitterness to speak of. Maybe just a hint of it in the front while the liquid's on your tongue. And just a little bit of a suggestion of it in the back in the finish. All in all, um, even though it says 100% malts, it pretty much falls within the standards of what I would call an adjunct macro lager. Being that it's not a light beer, it has a bit more body, but if anything, not much more flavor. It's, um, I would say it's, you know, nothing really offensive about it. I would go with something else, the Ebisu, I would definitely go with, Ebisu's flagship was probably the best of the Japanese macro lagers. Um, there's a whole bunch of little specialty ones that you don't really get, well I'm not going to say specialty, I guess you could call it seasonal lagers that Japanese macro breweries used to put out that are a bit better than the flagship brands. If you get a chance, try them. If not, this goes well with sushi. By the way, um, you should never go and pair sake with sushi. Uh, it, it, just because uh, sweet rice, the, the rice vinegar is added to the uh, well, the midin and the rice vinegar added to go and make the added to go and make the rice a little bit more sticky for the rice part of the sushi generally doesn't clap, go very well with the sake. Sake was. If you're going to be having sake at a sushi bar, I would definitely go with a sashimi plate to go along with it. That are some sort of shellfish. Sake doesn't really play well um, with eating. And that's because it has some very outstanding kind of flavors there. Have it before or after you eat, or be very careful in which and what you pair it with. And a lot of sake bottles will give you um, sort of what you're supposed to pair it with. It's supposed to be for toasting, for drinking before and after. Beer is for uh, eating and Japanese beer is basically designed to go with just about anything, really. What's Japanese whiskey used for? Well, the high end of it is used to really give, you know, scotch whiskey a good run for its money. And the low end of it is basically rot gut for Japanese alcoholics and salarymen on the downswing. Which I guess I could kind of fall into the American category of that, eh? <laughs> with less of a with less of a salary anyways. <laughs> but this has already gone on four times longer than anything you know, than any proper review for a macro logger should. So I'm going to go and call this to a close with a toast of Come pie. Night.